white man lambasts baro and his government first of all it is important to approach discussions about societal issues with an open mind and focus on constructive dialogue criticisms and critique of a country's problem can come from individuals of any race or background and it is crucial to evaluate the merit of their arguments rather than solely focusing on their ethnicity Addressing challenges and problems in a respectful and inclusive manner is more likely to lead to productive conversations and potential solutions. Engaging in resp- respectful and balanced conversations allows us to gain a deeper understanding of the issues at hand and work towards positive change. It is essential to promote empathy, respect, and open-mindedness when discussing complex topics, regardless of, of who is voicing their opinions. Now then, here we go. I really don't understand why... Um, this is the National Conference Center. This is one of the iconic places in the Gambia. And it's been left with this sign half ripped down. Um, everyone knows where this place is. I do not understand why Gambia allows itself to present itself to the rest of the world like this. I mean... Have you any idea what a beautiful, prosperous place the Gambia could be? Um, A jewel in West Africa. It really could. Um, Full of beautiful people, um, talented people, which you are. um, And yet you allow allow yourselves to uh, let all these things happen. Um, I I just find it frustrating. you could do so much better and and that's irrespective of this video was posted on 7th july 2023 and has caused a significant uproar online capturing the attention and stirring strong reactions from viewers across various platforms it has sparked intense debates heated discussions and passionate exchanges of opinions the widespread sharing and engagement around this video highlights its profound impact on gambian online community Gambians have expressed a wide range of emotions including anger, disbelief, frustration and even support as they delve into the contentious issues presented in the video. The heated discourse and varying perspectives demonstrate the power of digital media to ignite conversations and provoke intense reactions. As the online uproar continues, it underscores the importance of open dialogue, critical thinking and respectful engagement. It serves as a reminder that videos with significant social implications can have a profound influence on public sentiments and shape the narrative surrounding the topic at hand. While the uproar may eventually subside, the impact of this video and conversations it has sparked will likely leave a lasting imprint on both online and offline discussions. The British guy did not stop there, he went on to release another video. Hi, um, I thought I would post this. Um, I sent a post out yesterday which has caused some uh, aggravation, agitation and friction amongst some people. And so this is really a means, sort of in a means of apology. Um, uh, but also wanted to clarify a few things. Um, I'm fully well aware that my very appearance um, may be abhorrent to some people and some sectors of people here in the Gambia because of who I am. Um, I'm, I'm a white, a Brit, um, and I've been here for about a year and a half. I made a comment about um, the appearance of the National Conference Centre yesterday and my concerns about it and, and how it makes the Gambia uh, portray itself perhaps not in its best light. I, I've done an awful lot of research since I've been here and I don't need to I don't need to be here. Um, I choose to be here. I've been working in Muslim conflict, post-conflict and corrupt countries <coughs> for about 35 years now. Um, and I came out here uh, with a project to try and make things better. Um, I have no nothing to gain personally from what I'm doing. I, I choose to be here because I want to try and help. And I know that I can't do that by myself. 
People have made comments on the, about the fact um, that um, uh, I represent the white community. Uh, I think the white community needs to be extended to the global uh, community um, to include the West, to include the Chinese, to include the Russians, um, uh, and also um, to include those other African countries um, who have an influence and effect on the Gambia. Um, I, I'm focused on trying to restore two things uh, and I have every sympathy with the way the Gambians are right now. You have had your prosperity and you've had your dignity stripped away from you from years of corruption, decades of corruption and also from um, uh, things like international crime um, which are rife um, in this country at the moment and they arose um, uh, the economy um, and, and as I said they erode your dignity and the reason why Gambians generally speaking are the way they are is no fault of their own um, it's because of what's happened around them out of their control um, I uh, the Gambia has a couple of things really going for it uh, you are the most fertile country in West Africa probably in Africa um, and so you can grow anything here bigger, better, higher quality than anywhere else in Africa. The second thing you've got going for you is that from a climate perspective, you are one of the most climate friendly countries in the world. Um, now these things are critical because these are the things that you need to exploit. There is no reason why the Gambia cannot be totally self-sustained in food and grow its own food and not only that, be able to export your goods to other countries in order to be able to generate that economy. But the critical thing is that that money, that economy, stays with the Gambians. I agree that um, the uh, foreign um, influence ha has, uh, takes away um, the wealth of the Gambia through, um, uh, through the commercial stream, the private sector, um, and also politically, particularly with those closer neighbours to the Gambia. Um, who, who at the moment are in effect bullying the Gambia. The Gambia sits as very much the little brother uh, in this cluster of um, West African countries. So the threats to the Gambia are both close to home and also international. I work with the UK government um, and I, I give the UK government a hard time um, because I tell them that they have a responsibility for the Gambia. Uh, the problem is, is that they have no confidence in if they invest money in the Gambia that it will go to the right places because of corruption. Um, in order to be able to grow the Gambia and develop, you have to do this through the private sector. But importantly, that wealth, that economy has got to be held by Gambians, not by the international community, which is what's happening at the moment. Um, you have two things going for you, or two major economies here. One is um, uh, one is agriculture, and the other one is tourism. Um, the Gambia is a paradise. It's beautiful here, um, and it could be it could be so much more. My crazy romantic vision for this place is for it to be a uh, an emirate. Uh, a jewel in West Africa, um, a place, a services, principally services based place uh, which is seen as a tax haven, uh, which is seen as a, a major central strategic uh, route for all the other countries in West Africa. That is where I think the key lies. As far as the people are concerned, I'm actually... As a Gambian, I appreciate the individual's effort to address the concerns and frustrations that were caused by the, their previous post. It takes courage to acknowledge and apologize for any unintended consequences that may have arisen. It is also commendable that he has chosen to reside in the Gambia voluntarily and has dedicated a significant portion of his life to working in conflict, post-conflict and corrupt countries with the intention of making positive contributions. It is worth noting that the issues faced by the Gambia, such as corruption and erosion of prosperity and dignity, are not solely the fault of Gambians themselves but are influenced by external factors beyond their control. The individual highlights the Gambia's 
agricultural potential and its climate friendly status which presents opportunities for self sustainability and economic growth the focus on developing the private sector and ensuring that the wealth and economy benefit gambians aligns with the need for local empowerment and prevention of external exploitation moreover the mention of agriculture and tourism as significant economic sectors resonates with the country's resources and potential while his aspiration for the gambia to become an emirate and a central strategic hub may be ambitious it reflects a vision for growth and prosperity it is essential to approach these ideas with a critical lens taking into account the perspectives and interests of gambian people Overall, this individual's remarks emphasize the need for self-sufficiency, local empowerment, and a concerted effort to address challenges facing the Gambia. It is through collaboration, effective governance, and responsible utilization of resources that the Gambia can strive for a brighter future. Do you think what's said in this here is true or this guy is just doing it for clout? Let us know what you think in the comment section.